once again to the Ventures Travel Club television show. Betty, where are we? We are in Beijing, China at the Great Wall. That's right, and we got some adventures for you. I love it here at the Great Wall, Betty. This is great. Listen, I have some information that we didn't cover last week. Did you know that there are 1,200 watchtowers and blockhouses that were built on the Great Wall between the Shanghai Pass and Beijing? Well, of course I knew that. Oh, you didn't know that? Well, yes. Didn't I tell you that? Oh, I, oh, I meant to tell, tell you that, that okay. when we were there. Then another question then. <laughs> yes, this okay. Is, do you know what is a poo fang? A poo fang. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know what a poo fang is. Okay. Uh, that, uh, that is a simple little hut that was built on the Great Wall. There were little platforms that were, that were built there. And, and the section where we are near Beijing called Bandeling, uh, th this section of the wall had two stories with accommodations for more than 10 soldiers on the lower level. And there was also drainage dishes, ditches <laughs> rather on the wall to shield those soldiers from uh, damage by excessive rainwater. Well, they probably had draining dishes too. Yeah. You know, take care of the noodles <laughs> and the rice. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, we uh, had a great time at the Great Wall. And, you know, that's always a wonderful place to go back to. You know, this year, though, they didn't give us our little certificates. That's right, did they? Well, yeah. I have several of them at home, so I didn't miss it. But it's too bad other people didn't get it. We had certificates Things. before, you know, that we had climbed the Great Wall. You know, I think one of the reasons that we probably don't have them anymore is they probably have so many more I tourists think. now than they used to a few years ago, don't you think? Sure, and I bought a T-shirt I climbed the Great Wall of China, but I didn't see them this year either. Did you see them around? Yeah, there, there were a few of them. Oh, yeah, well, I, yeah. Didn't, I didn't. Well, there were a lot of little those. shops there. <laughs> well, now we've left, and we're going to stop for lunch, and so we're going to uh, another place here on the way back to uh, Beijing, and uh, we oh, had my. wonderful fish. <laughs> mm. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I, it was wonderful to you and Jackie. It was wonderful to Jackie. What is what is it she's eating right she there? She likes the head of the, the fish. The head of the fish. And we it. all gave her the heads of our fish. Yeah. So and that she, was she a, had a ball. She was having a, a, a feast on fish <laughs> that day. It was great. <laughs> we had a wonderful lunch where you can just see all of the, the, the leftover dishes that we had. And she read, see, then there was another one. We had two dishes of um, a wonderful fish. Yes, it was. That's not a fish story either, no, is it? No, it's not a fish that's story. That's a real true story. And the thing is, uh, in, it, the restaurant was in the back, and of course, there's a beautiful gift shop, and also a little cloisonne uh, factory that was uh, located here as well. Beautiful things that they had for sale. And I, right now, I'm, I'm kicked myself because there was something that I saw there that I had never seen in China before, and we'll see it in just a few moments. This is it right here. These were glass balls, and they're hollow on the inside, and the artist goes up with a little tiny brush on the inside and paints backwards. Yeah. Aren't these beautiful? They're smooth, just as well. The glass. Why didn't on I the buy one of those? I don't know, because you're good at buying stuff like that. I don't. I I think the reason I didn't is because they were so heavy. I didn't want to carry it all the way through China. Well, maybe they were too expensive. No, they wouldn't have been. Things weren't too expensive then, no, they there. Were, no, they really weren't. They weren't bad at all. Now, this was an experience this, for me. Yeah, we visited two uh, of these uh, workshops uh, for the clothes and A, and this one, uh, it was, uh, we'll see another one a little bit later on, but the designs here, I thought, were really, really Painstakingly. interesting. Painstakingly. Look at how they do that. One piece at a time, and the working conditions were not all that good. I felt a great impact for these young workers yeah. they, and you can you can see the patterns here that they have now those are little pieces of metal that are put in there then after the metal is put in then the uh, the porcelain is put in and then it's fired and then they put more porcelain on top of it because the porcelain during the firing uh, reduces itself and so they they keep adding to it and adding to it and adding to it so much work and then they polish it as we can see here there's a sign uh, here that uh, was very nice and I'm glad that they did this in English for us so that we could see that but and look at this one now they also made pictures as well besides the the jars that we saw and Betty look at the hand, various colors and work see we're used to having so much done by machinery uh, to to me me can't mechanize the things right but this is done by hand Oh, you have to do this by I hand. call this slave labor really because it uh, the wages aren't there for them they they have a place there this one where we went where there are dormitories 
so that yeah. because they we'll live out in the country, okay, mm -hmm. right. and it gives you an idea of the hours that they put in oh, doing this and back the work breaking. Is beautiful, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely look beautiful. Look at the colors. I know, mm -hmm. and it, it it has a three dimensional look to it. Ah, uh, here we are on our way to the, the Ming, Ming tombs. tombs, and uh, we're going to listen to our guide now. She explains uh, some of the area here that we're going to. And so I, I loved Helen. She was just wonderful. So let's listen to her as we are welcome to the Ming tombs. And uh, all of them are totally 13 tombs. And uh, the very in this area, the very first architecture is a stone memorial arch. And in the past time, the emperor descendants processions just uh, walk through this arch to the tombs to pay a respect and make a sacrificial uh, <coughs> ceremonies in the tomb areas. And uh, so they just pass through this arch and then the red gate, Da Hong gate means a red gate, and then take a walk along this road. Okay, and uh, so now you can see uh, these uh, pictures. It uh, shows the uh, the whole layout of the this uh, sacred road, and uh, this road uh, was uh, first built in 1435, and along this road uh, there are totally six kind of uh, animals, and the uh, three kinds of uh, stone statues, the figures, stone figures, and uh, the very first one is a lion, and then unicorn, xie uh, zhi, and uh, and then it's. Uh, Camel, uh, and then it's elephant, and then it's uh, Qilin is a Chinese mythical animals. Is uh, the uh, good luck, the symbol of good luck, and then it's a horse. So it's totally six kind of animals. Uh, the tomb is located in the north, seven kilometers away from here. You know because the emperor, all of the tombs, the tombs were built when the emperor was still alive. So he wanted to be emperor again in the next life. So he needed servants. He needed, you know, everything, just like when he was alive. So that's why he was buried with this, uh, you know, funeral ob objects and the treasures. So that's why this road was built. Okay, and now here we are this, at this south gate. Okay, so now we go out. This to me was lots of fun, even though it was a very, very warm day. Uh, but walking through this, uh, this seven kilometers down there uh, was was a nice little walk, but it was so beautiful and landscaped so yeah, nicely. We, well, you see, as we've said before, they have a lot of people to, to be able to work and keep it up. That's true, and they're doing a very nice job of it, let me tell you. Okay. In this pavilion, you can see the big stone tablet. And on this tablet is telling the history about the Ming tombs. How many tombs in this area? Who was buried in this place? And the when it was built and the when it was rebuilt. So just telling this history on this stone. And uh, this one, this is the big turtle, is uh, one of the sand uh, of uh, dragons. And uh, he is uh, capable of uh, head, uh, of a very uh, of very heavy burden, and uh, this uh, turtle has stayed here for over uh, almost 500 years without moving. And uh, well, according to Chinese custom, and when we see the turtles, we like to touch the head of the turtles. It means when you touch the head of the turtle, you will have uh, nothing to worry about. Well, you could pat his head or his tush, either one that you want, <laughs> I suspect. But that's a nice thing to think about, isn't it? You have nothing to worry about. All you have to do is pat the turtle. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're going to believe that? No, but it sounds nice, doesn't it? <laughs> it they have does. a lot of really nice things that they think about things that can happen to you that are good things, you well, know? Yeah. And it's sort of mind over matter, though. Of course it is, sure. It is. Anyway, uh, we, we did walk this, and it was uh, seven kilometers. Now, they have done something very modern for the people that don't want to walk. They also have a little trolley 
if you want to catch the trolley and pay uh, 50 cents or whatever, you can ride the whole way. But I think it, walking the whole way is very nice. And you were talking about, Betty, the people that were working here, and we can see they're snipping off the roses right here. They're working very, very diligently here. They've got, Can you imagine? Seven kilometers one direction and then seven kilometers mm -hmm. the other direction. That's back-breaking work. Marv, when we were there, was it ten years ago? However long ago it was, I forget. Do you, the One of the things that we saw that was so cute was the mother with her little boy, and he had the new. He had a pair of coveralls on that, that were split in the bottom. Mm -hmm. They just didn't. They had, air conditioned. It was air conditioned. So that if you had to go to the bathroom, there was nothing to remove. You just, you just opened up the little slit, and there he had it made. It was so clever. That's, that's true. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Something like that to make an impression on you when you have all these statues. And you remember that all well, these course. years, right? Well, I have children of my own, and I thought, what a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, do en I did enjoy all of these statues. That, and they, they, was, they were done very, very well. They just weren't put there and, and left out. You know? Well, of course, this, this uh, uh, sacred way, was really for uh, like for the funeral of the emperor. I mean, they traveled with him down this way and then up through the area that they had and then buried them, uh, buried him and his wives uh, in a great big tomb uh, behind. We did not go into the tomb itself. Uh, we just didn't have enough time to do that and that would take a little bit longer than uh, that one we wanted to spend because we were here for quite some time and this walk is a pretty nice one and it was as we Look say was i know that the, the yeah, work I mean, is yeah. is absolutely incredible just really good and you think how how many there are 18 pair of them i don't know whether she said that or not but to have 18 pair of these giant stone statues all leading to the emperor's tomb mm -hmm. ah, man. you know what i like there i don't know about you but i was wearing shorts that day and uh they had these sprinklers going and it was nice just to get under there. I felt like a kid again. It got me real uh, I'll cool. Wet. Well, <laughs> I could say something right then, but I, I won't say anything. Okay. You know about how people get all wet and all of that sort of stuff? <laughs> anyway. I let the sprinkler get me all wet. Yeah. yeah. You know, when the Ming Emperor died, it was the death of the Son of Heaven. So to provide a proper setting for his entombment, this concourse was built. And it was only used for the funeral procession. Uh, that led up to where the to where the tomb was. Of course, now it's uh, for tourists naturally, right. and I'm glad that we were able to go ahead and do this. What an ego trip! Really, yeah. for these emperors to think that they were so great, so magnificent, that they should have these magnificent things built for them, and you know, it was their sons that were responsible for the taking care of the father and seeing that he was buried properly. Oh, really? Yep. Mm, well, I guess the son did a very good job in I this guess, case. I guess we do it today, too. Oh, sure we do. I think, you know, history repeats itself over and over again. The beautiful gate that you can see right here was very good. Uh, you know, the last emperor, Pu Yi, he, when he was uh, driven out of the Forbidden City in 1924, he moved, he moved his uh, family home to the Japanese concessions. And... Uh, and then with the help of Japanese people, he moved to Tianjin, and then he moved to the north, uh, northeast of China, in Shenyang, the city, uh, the capital of Liaoning province. And uh, he, you know, he wanted to restore his power, restore the Qing Dynasty. So he needed help, and he needed support. And in, and in the meanwhile, the Japanese people you know, Japanese invaders conquered the northeast of China. They want to, you know, rob the source, natural source from China to, you know, strengthen their country. And uh, so he, the Japanese people support this emperor, support the last emperor to, you know, to uh, set up the, to restore the power and uh, set up the Manchuria. And uh, in 1945, the Japanese uh, army was, uh, you know, s uh, surrendered, surrendered, and uh, so the last emperor was arrested by former by Red Army of a former Soviet Union, and then he was uh, put into the jail in Russia. Until 1950, he was uh, sent back, and then he was uh, still in the jail in Shenyang, and uh, until 19. 54, he was a set free by the government. 
So he, uh, since then, he just uh, lived as uh, ordinary people, and then he worked. Uh, he worked in the uh, botanical garden as a worker, and uh, because he couldn't help it himself, when he was uh, very young in the in the in the in the Forbidden City, everything you know. Uh, he, he actually he didn't know anything he didn't know how to do anything even tie the shoes he didn't know how to tie the shoes so he needed help he needed assistance so even after the 1954 he needed some person help him so that's what the the emperor uh, sent him uh, a lady and uh, married to him so he married again and uh, and uh, until 1972, he died. Uh, he died of uh, liver cancer. Yeah. And so in his life. And this is the hall of eminent favor. This this is how big palace is used for the uh, emperor's descendants who come here to make a sacrifice. Uh, at the uh, the emperor's uh, died the date of. Uh, death and uh, and then after that is the, the gate this uh, uh, Ling Xin gate is a div the division of a present world and the next life and then the next one is a five offerings stone five stone offerings and then this is a soul tower uh, and then is uh, the uh, the mound so the Emperor's tomb just uh, under the mound so when the Emperor was buried inside you know the uh, people covered mound, covered the tomb with the earth, so make a mound, and then the uh, entrance was uh, blocked, hidden, hidden, so no one could know so where is the entrance to the tomb. So so far this tomb hasn't been excavated. Oh. Yeah, but uh, among the thirteen tombs, there is uh, only one excavated, which is uh, yeah, Ding Ling, named is uh, Ding Ling, and uh, is uh, in another tomb, not this one. But that home now is empty, and the, some of the treasures and the funeral objects were dis are displayed in this home. So now, here in this palace, is converted into a little museum. So in this museum, you can see the uh, treasures, some treasures and some uh, funeral objects. Some of them are reproductions. Some of them are the real one. This uh, ride that we took after the after the sacred way continues as we say it and goes on. And Betty, you can recognize here as we're going in through these sets of buildings here that um, the centerpiece there, of course, was only for an emperor to be able to walk on. Of course, that was that the carvings that we see down there. And we saw that again in the uh, Forbidden City and some of the other areas as well where the emperor uh, visited or where he lived or where he was going to be and uh, that's all blocked off now but even so it looks as though uh, through the centuries that some of it is worn down a little bit hopefully people haven't been stepping on that they do have it uh, so it's roped off now but uh, these grounds were really quite lovely I thought here and I uh, remembered that she said that all but one of the Ming emperors were buried uh, around this area uh, the, the, the one that wasn't buried there was buried uh, in a tomb around Nanjing but because of all the wars and the revolutions and things that tomb was totally destroyed I don't understand how come they haven't excavated more tombs because they should find a wealth of information as well as a wealth of m what not a wealth of when I say money well you don't say a wealth <laughs> of money what do you say how do you what phrase do you think, that you mean the treasures the, the treasures yeah. thank you that's it well, uh, I don't know. I guess there is a particular reason why they haven't done that. Uh, next time we go back, we'll ask them. We'll have to find <laughs> out. Well, maybe they will have done another one by that time. Probably they're spending so. so much money now for the Olympics that maybe they're going to need a few shekels. No, that's in <laughs> Jerusalem, isn't it? They'll need some money Probably anyway. Probably so. Yeah. Well, I, you know, when we get over to Xi'an and we see the terracotta warriors, and the first time we visited there, there was just one area that was excavated, and now there are three areas. So mm -hmm. they're doing they're, they're doing quite a bit, as, do, as we can see. Do you notice the hand carving on the, on the floor mm -hmm. there? All of that done by hand. Right, and that and is, of course, where this guy 
would have passed over. The emperor would have, uh, I doubt if he ever walked on that. I think that they were probably carried over that, you know. This is inside the museum, and as she said, some of these are reproductions and some of these are the real thing. These are hats. Now, can't you just see yourself wearing one of those hats, Well, Betty? I like hats, but I think that'd be a little much. You, you, oh, I don't know. That's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, probably the, I think that this was a, an emperor's hat, and I think the other one was an empress's hat. If I'm not mistaken, that could have done. That could have gone for a graduation cap if they'd have taken the little <laughs> beads you off. You graduated of it. as a yeah. as an emperor, right? Yeah. This was really quite a beautiful area, and of course we can see a lot of carving here uh, on the steps and all the way around these particular buildings. One which was considered a palace, and of course we saw the uh, uh, area, I guess, where the uh, where the guy would have sat, and some of our the guy the emperor would have sat <laughs> some of our people got a little tired and sat down too for a little while because this was quite a long walk now this is the tower uh the soul tower and it's a bell tower actually did you go up here no i did not i had gone before once was enough oh you had gone up this one yes before? yes oh, yes okay. up to the top i walked i love this I cherish the cultural up. relics and don't scribble oh how cute <laughs> but that you walked up to the top yeah, yeah, this one, this one this wasn't a very an, big one. Oh. The, the big one comes later on. Oh, well, maybe that's the, the one I'm thinking remember of. Remember the big then. blue goose oh, pagoda? Oh, the blue goose pagoda. <laughs> that's what I'm sure I walked yeah, up okay. here. What am I? Okay. Yes, of course I walked up All here. Right. Well, I got up on top of this, and uh, most of our most of our people did take the walk up here. And again, it was a pretty warm day, and it was a good day to sit down and get a nice drink of uh, Coke or whatever if you could find them around there. And usually they had some nice refreshments that uh, that were for sale, so it made it very convenient for the tourists. Uh, and this area, again, was so clean, so pristine, very nice. There it is, the Seoul Tower. And uh, we can. it was built, as it says, of wood at one time, uh, but then it uh, was rebuilt of stone. You know, a lot of things were done that way, were built of, of wood, and then were redone of stone. Well, Even parts of the uh, parts of the wall were, well, were see, done that Well, see, wood was more available, and wood was easier to take to handle. You know, those, they had the, the instruments, the tools for cutting down trees, yeah. but chiseling and, and doing the carving. Oh, oh, there it is. <laughs> no, that isn't what I saw, though. That's not no, what you saw. No, the ones I had were little overalls, uh -huh. regular little overalls. This, was, this guy was but really But this guy was naked, right. but no, but this, no, these <laughs> kids had little panties on, little uh, coverall type uh -huh. things that just didn't have a seam in the, between, in well, the legs. They've gone there. modern. The, the kids uh, have gone modern. No, that guy looked like a, what the, what are the wrestlers, what do they call the Sumi? Just looked like a bib, I don't uh -huh. know. Anyway, we now stopped uh, on our way back to uh, to Beijing at another Cloisonne factory, and you can see here again. Look at all the of these beautiful colors that they used. Oh, so vivid! Betty, I'll tell you, this was this was something. I think quite a few of our people bought things here at this uh, factory. Do you have any uh, Cloisonne? Uh, I have the a, things that you bought. Yes, I have two, but but from quite a long time ago, and not really expensive ones like this. These are things I bring home just as, you know, keepsakes or reminders. It's something when I die, my kids won't want. <laughs> And it goes to the yard sale, right? Uh, yeah. Well, um, here the the firing was a little more sophisticated here than in the other place that we where we had stopped for lunch. Uh, but what I liked about this was that we had a chance to see them do the uh, hand polishing here. And you know, th this has got to be quite a job. And most of this was done by women, and it has uh, a, a a great deal of strength that is involved, I think, in doing this. You know, so you build up some good muscles. Now. This was a beautiful, beautiful example of cloisonne, and it was quite large, and of course it's only 468,000 yen. So uh, I guess some people could have put that on their credit card. But Break it, it down. What would that be? I have no idea. I, mean, I forget I how many. The, you know what, what we do, most was. of us, when we go over there, we use our credit card because you can't use your credit card, and it's automatically put into the money of the country mm -hmm. that you're in and then when you get your bill it's you it's already deducted for you right. so it, it, it's you so convenient it. it really it is I really like this because it gives a very three-dimensional look now, also in the shop here there was a great variety of jade and we had some people with us that knew uh, good jade oh, from Rico regular was, oh, jade, yeah. right? Rico was so, an expert at yes, and we asked her really advice her about jade. a lot of things. I think she did buy some jade on the trip. I don't know if she did it right here or not. Anyway, 
the, uh, this factory, this is where the people live, right here. They live right on the grounds of the factory, this cloisonne factory. And so we were going to leave there and uh, then head on back to Beijing. This was a wonderful day, though. And that's usually what we do, is we'll go to the Great Wall, and then we'll stop and we'll have lunch afterwards, and then we'll go through the Ming tomb. So you really get to see a lot in one day. And this <laughs> is an example of some of the older architecture that you see on the highway going back This is back China. The yeah, then right. now this doesn't look this China. This is the new China. Yeah, that's, I, you know, that kind of worries me a little bit. Not worries me, that's stupid. But I, I hate to see everything old torn down and replaced with modern things that you'd find in New York. Yeah, but if you say. live there, you, wouldn't you want to live in a nice new apartment building instead of an old Oh, of course not. Through. I'd rather live in the old. Oh, such a dumb question. <laughs> I'm just talking about from the aesthetic point yeah, of well, view, that's, you know. That's true. But For you, us as a tourist. You, know, you find that all over the world, though. You know, very, very true. Well, we're heading back now to our hotel, and as we entered uh, the hotel in the lobby, uh, we saw a piano player at one time, but this time we're going to be entertained by a uh, small little orchestra that I thought was very, very entertaining. They were wonderful. I really enjoyed that. Hey, Betty, you've got lots of trips coming up. You better give your phone number. Oh, my phone number is 559-488-7443. So give Betty a call. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.